Hello and welcome to Finextra. I'm Hannah Wallace and today I'm kindly joined by Daniel King from Access Corporate. I'm going to be discussing the impact of Brexit on the financial services industry. Daryl, thank you very much for taking the time to speak with us today. Delighted, Hannah. Firstly, what are the key challenges and opportunities that Brexit creates for the UK financial services industry? Well, Hannah, I think overall um, uncertainty is the, uh, the main one, um, particularly in the, the build-up to uh, clarity around the uh, withdrawal agreement. But I think the important thing to note is that with Brexit, it's not just a, a piece of legislation. Um, it will affect different firms in, in different ways. Uh, and that's the key thing to remember. So, for example, with um, a, a non-UK EU bank that might have a base in London, suddenly they need to consider uh, passporting rights will be removed. Um, they'll no longer have access to cross-border trading or markets. And almost overnight, um, contracts and mandates could, could become invalid. Compare that, for example, to, say, a UK firm, um, one or two already just focusing on the domestic market, but with the acceptance and the knowledge that they will pay more for, for cross-border services, payments, transactions of that like, and pass that on to uh, their actual clients. I guess on a positive note though, um, fortune does favour the bold for, for those who, who are willing to say change their sales approach or distribution approach, uh, perhaps enter into bilateral uh, agreement with say a non UK or non-EU um, market and, and again open up markets for themselves in, um, in that particular approach. And do you think banks are thinking enough about the impact of Brexit on their clients? Well I think banks can do a lot more and, and that's largely down to the appetite of C-level executives uh, to do more and also funding priority as well within the overall scheme of things and, and more importantly, whether there's actually bandwidth within the firm itself to, to actually look at the sponsors to Brexit and, and, and put in um, the necessary changes for, for what's clear at the moment. Notwithstanding the fact that in the last six to 12 months, firms have been dealing with MIFID II, GDPR and, and open banking, so already it's um, a full agenda. However, I do feel that banks are increasingly doing um, a bit more with Brexit and it's becoming increasingly a higher priority in, in the overall scheme of things. Um, but for me, my own personal opinion is that um, banks really need to have this on their radar now. They need to be active now and they need to be uh, doing uh, perhaps um, a lot more than what they think is possible, particularly given the uncertainty that Brexit brings. And finally, what steps can they take to ensure their clients don't suffer as a result of Brexit in terms of service and experience? I believe banks need to uh, adopt a pragmatic approach and, and look through any implications through the eyes of the client or their customers. So for example, I, I consider five areas that they need to uh, be focused on. So one is around markets. Um, what, are, what markets do they operate in? How do they get impacted? Is there opportunity to, to expand or branch out into new markets? Product, what sort of products are they distributing today and, and, and how will those change going forward? Will some products be switched off? Services is a kind of key one really. How seamless are services today and, and how will they be impacted and, and their operations and, and supporting infrastructure? Um, and then of course we, we come down to the people who support all of these things. Um, where's, where's the talent today? Where's the resource pool? Um, does that rely on languages? Does it rely on um, overseas um, talent coming in? Suddenly that could all be inaccessible or, uh, or perhaps a perception could be that there are jobs or roles elsewhere that um, an individual might want to pursue. And then finally, finally, and I think this is fairly key, is that every firm who's involved or impacted by Brexit really needs to have a very clear customer client communication plan and no matter what the uncertainty is bring your clients and customers along with you and what's after all going to be a very monumental change in the market and, and I feel customers need to trust their firms in, in order to embrace that. Daryl, this has been great. Thank you very much. You're more than welcome. And thank you for watching.